oh yeah, no one wants to see women characters. Men hate women characters. Funny thing is, history says that that's a lie. Hey, what's up, nerd fam? It's your boy, Gershon. I want to welcome you to Enter the Nerd. Today, I want to talk about something that is just pretty much a straight-up lie. And that lie is that men just don't like women characters or uh, strong female characters just do not do well. They're not supported and all that. And they only like one type. And it's, it's just not true. It's not. As someone who has grown up reading comics, watching cartoons and stuff... This all that's been around uh, for us. Like, no one has a problem with Wonder Woman. No one has a problem with Black Widow, the Sue Storms, Storm. There's so many characters. Live Wire. So many characters that I I've read in comics that have been women that there have been no issues with. And the guys in the comic book shop aren't going, oh my gosh, she's a woman. I don't want to see her. That's not what's happening, right? Now, are some of them, like the Red Sonyas of the world and stuff like that, are they a bit scantily clad? Sure, but if you look at some of the guys who are in there, they're scantily clad too. And who do you think that those are for? You know, for anyone who wants to see scantily clad dudes. Yet, a lot of guys aren't saying, my gosh, like, why are they doing this to us? That's just not a narrative. It's not a narrative for us. So, I want to talk about some heroines who have definitely appeared in mainstream media, who have been successful, that guys have liked, but a lot of people just don't recognize or refuse to even, like, acknowledge their existence because they do not fit their uh, narrative about things. So let's start. First, recently, I gotta say Michonne. She's right on my shirt. Michonne's a badass character. She's been in The Walking Dead. Whether you read the books or not, you see her. She's up there with her with her sword. She's leading uh, two zombies to fend off the other ones or to ward them off. She's awesome. She was the ultimate survivor in a very traumatic, obviously, post-apocalyptic world for everyone. Now, funny enough, when I bring her up in certain circles, like say they have some of these like uh, blurred groups or whatever like that, I say that specifically because I've only actually ever heard this particular criticism in these groups. Um, they'll be like, "Oh well, she's cool until she started sleeping with Rick, and she was they 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 made this black character so promiscuous." Meanwhile, everyone was being promiscuous because it was a post-apocalyptic. I don't think everyone was being conservative sexually, right? And it's like, okay, what, what's wrong with her being with anyone of them being with whoever they want to be with? But for some reason, because she was black, it was a, a black woman, they tried to make this an issue. And it, and it really isn't because like it was something that everyone in the, in the book was doing. But they could just focus on the badass shit that she was doing in the whole thing. But I thought it was awesome. And she does not lean on any uh, socials because obviously it's in the post-apocalyptic stuff. So why should you do that? I'm not saying that there aren't other let's just say games that leaned on uh social issues even in a post-apocalyptic world but her as a character does not and then we got another big franchise like celine celine is also just like michonne attractive but powerful like she's got her own series she's out there she's one of the strongest characters in the in the entire uh well later on she becomes pretty much almost like a god right in awakening which obviously those later underworld movies aren't are really good but at least the first three are, are rather interesting yes she, she will walk around some tight leather mm-hmm just like in every other superhero that walk around some tight suit on that you probably would not be using to protect yourself but they, it is what it is sex sells right but not only for for women it's also for men for men as well so let's not do that there but she it wasn't like once again when she was fighting these vampires she was trying to fight the patriarchy she was just trying to save the world trying to get the the man she loved at the time and also her child later on, she's trying to juggle all those things like any hero would do. A love interest, save the world, and then fight their own personal demons. She was fully fledged, and there was nothing wrong with that. Like, nothing wrong with that at all. But people act like either she doesn't exist, because if they talk about it, then that'd be another woman that a lot of guys bought bought into. Yes, did men think she was good looking? Mm-hmm. But guess what? There are tons of shows and movies where women... Or anyone in there are good looking, but the, if it's just whack, no one's gonna watch it. It is what it is. Even, um, what's her name? Uh, Lorraine Broughton, I believe that's her name in Atomic Blonde. Charlize, Charlize Theron did awesome in that one. And that's because those fight scenes were amazing. 
Charlize Theron did like pretty much almost all her stunts and she was really getting like hit. I mean like the, the actress, I mean like, it was one of those times where you see a woman really getting her ass beat. And instead of, you know, when you see a lot of the women's fight, uh, when the women's, what, when you see a lot of the women fight grunts in these like action movies, for some reason they just turn completely retarded when they're fighting the women. They just miss, and they do all these uncharacteristic things that they wouldn't do when they're fighting the men. But she was fighting for her life and it was like brutal, just like how the men would do it. And that was awesome to see. A lot of people didn't get a chance to see Atomic Bond. You should go see it because she was an awesome lead character. And once again, did not lean on, oh God, it's only the men that are here. Like, I I am this, I'm super skilled, but my weakness is still that I'm a woman. That was not there. And there are so many other heroes I'm gonna bring up that also did not lean on that. And once again, men support them. So I'm gonna go real far back right now and talk about probably one of the most important heroines we have, Ellen Ripley, right? Sigourney Reaver, this was not a feminine, this is not like a super feminine character because she was like a grunt, she was a Marine. Yet she's an awesome character. When you see her, she's iconic. This is a science fiction movie. Mostly men are watching those movies. All the other movies we're talking about right now, even the, the older ones I was talking about, mostly men fill up these like kind of nerd scientific genre. It's usually mostly men who are who are watching that. So clearly, those movies did well. They support, no one's going like, oh, well, she's kind of bush. We don't want to watch her. We, we need her only in scandal. No, she's an awesome character. She was a badass. And she was a mother at the same time. So she had that duality, you know? And then you even, you know, a little bit further from there, you have like Sarah Connor. Also, and she went from being like a damsel in distress to being a badass in the second movie. And that was awesome. Linda Hamilton did great in that part. No problem. No problem. Once again, science fiction, same genre that a whole bunch of dudes are watching. We do not have a problem with characters like this. We just don't. At least not me. Maybe there's somebody out there, some people out there like, uh, she's got a uterus. Uh, I can't watch this. Maybe there's somebody like that. But for me, no. They're just cool characters. They had some development and I liked it. Now, for the favorite one that I really want to talk about, two of my favorites because they were really within my time of living. I'm 30 years old, right? And it's two. One, La Femme Nikita, right? They had a movie for La Femme Nikita where she was like, uh, she started off as like a drug addict, but then in the, in the show, she was just homeless. Either way, she's getting manipulated by her father to become like the world's best assassin. And she has to like juggle her humanity and killing like, it's, she's, once again, a fully fledged character. And it was also the top running series for like two or three years on the cable network when it was on USA. So people loved it, people supported it. But once again, she was just allowed to be a badass. She could just be a killer. And then she could have her love interest whenever she wanted to. You know, this you know whole uh, sexually liberated women that people want, they, she was there. And speaking of that badass woman, the one that I'll say that I have to watch, um, I think I'm probably gonna start watching it again tonight, is Xena. You can't forget Xena. Once again, we're probably beat up almost and killed almost every dude or every character that she was really in a room full of. Where people saw her, they were scared of her. She went through a whole bunch of crazy development because she used to be a bad guy. Then she became what she was. She loved, she, she was a man eater as well. She could be whoever she wants. <laughs> She with gods, she's with like henchmen, Julius Caesar, it didn't matter who it was. It didn't take away from her character. Guys were going like, oh gosh, she's a whore. Dudes were just like, I wish I was Julius Caesar, right? That's what they were doing. And at the same time, her show was better than her contemporary in, in Hercules because since she didn't have a whole bunch of superpowers, they had to focus on how skilled she was. That's a big deal. That's a big deal, man. And then she had like her foil, which I forgot the blonde girl. That was like kind of like the like the opposite her kind of in a way. Like there was some really cool stuff that show did for like women characters, right? Now then obviously we can talk about the Foxy Browns and like the Friday uh, Fosters. There's so many. There are so many that we could really talk about, right? Buffy. Say what you want about Josh Whedon. But Buffy was big in the 90s. And once again, she was allowed to be the main character, be who she wanted, even though she was supposed to be in high school at the time. It's just, it's so many characters we can really talk about. I just want to get rid of this narrative. Obviously, we're not going to because they're trying to sell it. And that was something that happened even in the Birds of Prey movie. They tried to say, oh, the reason why this didn't do well was because, 
you know, men hate. No, 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 no. It's not about being chauvinist. Those were based off of characters in the comics and you did a shit job at adapting them. That's what happened. Stop making shitty characters and then going, well, it's you just hate them because they have a vagina. No, because there are plenty of male characters that suck and people don't buy into them. How many failed shows starring guys don't, don't go off? How many movies starring guys fail? Come on. Can we like go into reality here? And please, all those things that I told you about, please look look those up. If you haven't watched, if you haven't watched anything from those characters, please do. There's so many. There's, there's so many characters, right? Man, let me know. Have you watched any of those? Do you agree? Do you think men just don't support support women characters? Even in games, you think we just go out of our way to not play? Because that's what it's stupid. Into the nerd.